Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Speaker. Minister, when you were here on March 25th, you dismissed my question out of hand, asserting that your 10% wage subsidy was too low. You said I was incorrect. 48 hours later, your government reversed itself and announced a 75% wage subsidy, but more details weren't provided until five days after that. Now we have C-14 before us, two and a half weeks after your first attempt to offer a wage subsidy. Canadians still will have to wait another three to six weeks to receive their money. Minister, it's great that corporations like Air Canada will hire back employees with this wage subsidy, but they have deep pockets to withstand the wait. With rent payments due for the month of May in short order, how do you think, Minister, small businesses will survive until they receive this wage subsidy? Well, thank you, Senator. Uh, there's a number of things you said in that statement, so perhaps I can unpack it one by one. Uh, first, when I was last here, I was talking about the importance for us to have a Made in Canada approach. Your question, I believe, if I'm correct, was about the approach of another country. Um, in our situation, we saw it as critically important that we start with the idea that uh, many of our employees, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, 5.7 million, in fact, out of 19 million, would not be impacted uh, positively by a wage subsidy because they're not actually attached to an employer. So in that regard, we decided that the first and most important thing we could do was to have a, uh, an approach that would emerge in an emergency basis support them. Second, the 10% wage subsidy we put in place uh, originally is in fact different than what we're talking about today. That subsidy was for all small businesses without an impact on, uh, on their business and necessarily in a direct way. So for any business, any business up to 18 employees, they have that 10% uh, wage subsidy. What we're talking about today is a 75% wage subsidy for employers who actually have a decline in revenues of 30% or more. So I uh, used an example of Air Canada, and I could use many other examples in Canada, uh, of businesses that are significantly impacted by COVID-19. And in fact, it is presenting enormous challenges for all of those businesses, large and small, because of the declines in revenue. So we think that is critically important for them to retain their employee group. With respect to the small businesses, I think you'll know that we've also introduced some other measures. We put in place for the smallest of businesses what we call the Canada Emergency Business Account, which will allow them to have $40,000 in interest-free debt between uh, now and December 31st, 2022. And if they're able to pay that off by that time, they'll get $10,000 $10, of it, uh, or up to 25% forgivable. So that's enabling uh, them to bridge a particularly difficult time. So we know that there will be other things that we need to consider. Uh, we think that that will help many businesses, along with, of course, their ability to uh, pay their employees. And uh, for those businesses that have taxes paying, whether it's GST or income taxes, we've deferred those as well, creating a source of uh, liquidity for them. Uh, finally, we're putting in place measures to ensure that people have access to credit across all sizes of, of business, and we know that that will enable them also to, uh, to bridge this difficult time. Uh, if you have any specific ideas, we're happy to engage on those ideas and consider them as, uh, as something that we can look at in future. Well, I had a specific idea a few weeks ago. Minister, Alberta, Saskatchewan and Newfoundland and Labrador are still waiting for help from your government as they deal with COVID-19 but a collapse in oil prices. When you were last here on March 25th, you said that these provinces would see help from your government in, and I quote, hours, potentially days. Why the delay? Where is the aid package you promised these provinces two and a half weeks ago? Suncor's cost of borrowing went up considerably earlier this week. You said in March you were looking at ways to backstop lenders to our energy companies. What will you do on that front? Well, in fact, Senator, there has been no delay. There's been a number of things that we've done that will uh, positively impact uh, firms in the energy sector as well as firms uh, more broadly. And we've done, uh, done them step by step. So uh, first, with respect to uh, the many, many small businesses in the energy sector, the uh, emergency business account will provide them with access to capital. So that's quite important. As you know, there's many small businesses uh, in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, second, the wage subsidy, because 
least most of those businesses have been seriously hit from a revenue standpoint because of the, the you know the three impacts. Uh, Mr. Minister, we have to move to uh, another question. Okay.